Hey, we're live. It's James Maduke speaking, trainingsites.io. Here's the big picture. I think YouTube is the future of AI. That's one of the reasons I think Google is in such a great space in the whole AI ecosystem. It's especially about YouTube. And if you're a small business owner, uh, an entrepreneur, someone who is in this space where you want to start and build and grow an education business, I'm not talking about necessarily big businesses. That's another picture. But Someone who's really excited about something wants to be able to share it. I think that YouTube is the future of AI, and I want to explain why I think that. Um, the reason that I kind of came up with this is obviously because I've been talking about AI and I've been in the education space for a long, long time. And I'm always looking like, how can I leverage or what is it that's special about the videos that I do with all of this AI stuff? And everyone can copy it. The students can copy as AI tools become more available. But competitors or people that are in the same space as me can basically copy anything that I do successfully. So what makes it different? How can I protect myself and my business? And where's the spot, the sweet spot that helps that? And that's why I'm saying YouTube is the future of AI. And why is YouTube the future? Well, I was talking to my friend ChatGPT over the weekend. I was just trying to figure this out for myself. Um, and I want to just put this in perspective, and you'll see the value as soon as we go through this. Uh, over the last, and I'll write this down, over the last, let's say, 18 months uh, on YouTube alone, I have a Vimeo account uh, as well, and I'll bring that into thing. But in terms of videos, if I look today, I have 480. That's a zero. I have 480 videos available to me on YouTube, okay? Of those videos, some of them are 25 minutes, some of them are 15 minutes, but I just picked an average of, of 20 minutes for every video. Now, if I'm thinking about that, I got 20 minutes for every video, how many words are in an actual video then? If I take the transcription, how many words are actually in it? And ChatGPT, according to ChatGPT, if I'm looking at uh, a sales kind of lecturing situation, you're looking at 3,200 words in a 20 minute video. If it's just conversational, it's a little bit lower, let's say 3,000 words. But I took 3,200 because I tend to speak pretty quickly when I'm on these videos. And if I take a look at those 480 that were on uh, uh, YouTube, I have another 1,000, but I just picked 700 as a number on Vimeo. I have the transcriptions and I'm looking at approximately uh, a little over 4 million words in transcription. So just put that in perspective. That's 40 full-length books of 100,000 words each. 4 million words of transcriptions. And that is from videos that I've been creating. And the big chunk of those, you know, 1.2 or 1.3 million has been in the last 18 months. I've been creating videos as quickly as I can, as fast as I can on YouTube. And the reason I'm doing that is the transcriptions, not necessarily the videos. Because anytime that you are actually building out or leveraging AI tools, how does this actually work? Uh, I've been talking over the last while, I think, uh, you know, if I'm thinking about it, um, I've been talking about a while, I, I, the business model that I always propose or talk about is something called a campus blueprint or hub and spoke marketing. And my personal kind of thing. And what I've been trying to do is get people to create training sites or privately branded campuses or communities. And the thing about these is that if you have your own community, you've attracted an audience and converted them to free members of your community, you have them in that castle, that community that's available to you. But one of the things you want to make sure is that you have a protective moat around it, right? You want to make sure that there's something unique about your community that just can't be visited somewhere else or stolen from somewhere else, you have to have some place to protect yourself. And that is exactly what these transcriptions do. They are your competitive moat. This is the part that actually protects you and makes sure that you stay unique. Because that data, those 4 million words or 1.5 million words that you've actually collected in the last while because you have YouTube videos, that is your proprietary data that AI uses when it is creating content. Um, and the reason I'm looking at this is a real simple one. When I was taught, and I'm still kind of taught, it's like, hey, if you want to you know, be in an education business, create a course, 
create 15 videos, 25 videos, put it into a course. A course has nothing necessarily proprietary in it anymore. The reason is, is because you can have your students can actually create the courses for all intents and purposes. And even if they can kind of creatively plagiarize the way you presented it, your syllabus, the lesson plans, they can regurgitate the content that you put together just by using ChatGPT or transcribing it. But 15 videos, 25 videos in a course, there's no protective or proprietary data in that anymore. On the other hand, if you do have a load of transcripts, all of these words, that library is something that AI can call on when it's giving answers or being used with your customers in your community. What am I talking about? You have frameworks that, you're styling, uh, that you, you create during all of these videos. These frameworks are your frameworks, they're proprietary. If you create custom GPTs or apps or things like that, you can have them run off of your data. And this is happening. You can create a custom GPT now. I've done a whole bunch of videos on that. Um, and if you haven't seen it, make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join here. That's my uh, personally branded campus, my AI learning community. It's all free. Everything that I do uh, is free in there, that private community. Everything that I've been doing in these videos, there's uh, probably a couple hundred videos. Well, all of the 480 videos that I've actually done in YouTube are there with a little proprietary hitch, what I'll share with you in a second. But AI tools, end of 2025, beginning of 2026, there's going to be apps and stuff. They're going to be pulling from AI. We need to have some data that protects us. That is the transcripts that are coming from YouTube. So create them as fast as you can. So you've got a situation now where you've got proprietary data. You're creating custom GPTs. You have your own frameworks that are within this custom data. And you have a gold mine of repurposing content. You know, your community isn't just about the videos. It's about what can I do with the videos? And if you have the transcripts, you also have approximately 4,000 blog posts. And that was a number I took from 3,000, I think, million words. But even I'll take 2,000 blog posts if you're still interested in blog posts, which I don't spend any time on. Um, you know, if you did want to make little micro courses where it's one or two lessons, you've got hundreds of them that are now available because the chat GPT and the little uh, apps and stuff that are being built now becoming available, they can pull on your transcripts. They're creating content from your transcripts. Social media posts, you got a year worth of as many social media posts as you want. Prompt libraries, downloads, handouts, PDFs, quizzes, all of that stuff can be repurposed and it's all done on your content. One of the things that's happening here in my community, we're just starting to play around with our own AI agent from AI Engine that works directly from the WordPress site, from our content and the transcripts that are available on the site. So any of the agents that we create or bots that we create in the community, we can have them, but we can also monetize them. If I create a web app, for example, I can start creating a web app using Lovable or any of these tools, and I can have my assets, my transcripts, as the first line of content that actually gets referenced for it and start selling uh, things like that. So that competitive moat that you have, that protection around you is all based on the transcript. So you got to make sure not 25 videos in a course, as many YouTubes as you can possibly get created as fast as you can get created and get them converted into actual transcripts. Now, the big problem with all of this is, is that you have to collect and create the transcripts. And the really great part is it's getting a lot easier to do this. There are a number of tools that are available that will actually do this, where you create a video, it'll actually do the transcription, format it for you, make sure that it's organized with titles and all of the different ways that it gets indexed, the length of the video, the topics, the key takeaways, the time, the date, the author, all of this stuff gets indexed and you have a library of indexed content. And this is a cool thing about it. When it's organized, remember what happens. If I have, and I want to do, for example, uh, uh, I want to have a widget or a bot, or I want my uh, custom GPT to answer something, and it's based on my 3 million words or my 1.5 million words or my 4 million words, it is there, 
and it can go to the transcript and because it's indexed and referenced with the video, it can actually pull up the segment of the video that is according or set up with the particular content. So this can be not just spit out some text, this can actually pull back the videos that you've created and have a multimodal full content and context kind of um, education brought back to the people that you're trying to teach. And that is personalized to their request. Not you doing a static course of 25 videos, it's actually a custom course for the unique individual who's asking a specific question uh, to be answered. So there's huge value in having this all put together. And the real value of transcripts, I'm going to go over those here quickly, and then I'm actually going to give you a simple framework to think of when you're creating your videos for YouTube. The big part is the transcripts are searchable. I talked about this a little bit. That text is the part that your large language models are being trained on is the text. Right now, the video, Google and a couple of the tools are working on it, but for the most part, it's not available yet. The transcript is the important part. Um, when you have the transcripts, it also becomes multilingual. One of the things that I've been kind of interested about is that I'm getting more people from my YouTube videos from foreign languages and foreign countries, and that's because I've got auto dubbing turned on. And that means someone that's watching it in a different country or different continent in a different language is getting my transcripts auto dubbed on my videos into their preferred language. Um, any of the content that I have in a YouTube video and a transcript can quickly and easily be value added in your community. What do I mean by that? Every single video that I make on YouTube right now, I take the transcription and I have ChatGPT go and do a summary of the transcriptions, five takeaways, five action items, and I now have value added content based on my video and my transcription. So you can build a whole other set of library that's over and above what just comes from the static YouTube video that basically just has the video and uh, the raw, tran uh, uh, the raw tra transcript. And then the repurposing can be automatic now with any of the agents and things that are available. So here's kind of what I want you to think about whenever you're creating a video. And I'll put this, hopefully I can write it here so that it makes sense, uh, put it together here. But here's... Anytime you're making a YouTube video, here's my big thing. Create YouTube videos as fast as you can, as quickly as you can, as many as you can, based on your topical authority map. And if you haven't done that before, I'll put the link to the topical authority map. This is a way to basically have a library of a thousand questions in and around your topic that you can answer uh, and help people with those questions and challenges that they have in your space, the part that you're trying to uh, educate people on and that they, you know they have to learn to be able to be successful. That's the stuff you teach. So that's in a topical authority map. So this, every time you're creating a video on YouTube, and I'll do it in another video on kind of why I think you should do live edit videos, which is another story, but just think of the acronym video when you're doing this. So it's all based on your topical authority map. These are the things I want you to kind of think about. The first one is V, and V stands for value. Just remember, what is the value of the video that I'm actually creating, and should it be created? And this is the part that is tied directly to that topical authority map. If you're going to create a video, make sure it's answering one of the questions on the topical authority map. If it isn't, don't make the video. So that's the first thing. Make sure that you've got the right value assigned or the purpose of the actual video. The second one is I. So the acronym is video, but the I is we want to make sure that we can Pardon my penmanship. We want to be able to invite engagement. Now, remember on YouTube, we can have comments. And if we're doing live, we can have chat, but we can also give call to action and additional pieces. The cool thing about doing this on video and inviting people to give feedback is that if you have an idea at the start about what your course is about or what people want to know about, if you're creating as many YouTube videos as you can, as quickly as you can, 
you're going to find out what people are paying attention to and engaging with and what they aren't. So creating 25 videos in a course and trying to sell a course or having 100 videos to let people raise their hand and say, hey, that really makes sense to me. It's interesting, as opposed to spending a whole bunch of time creating a course to find out that 12 of the 15 videos people don't want to pay attention to or don't care or aren't interested in. That's where you want to make sure that you invite engage people in there. The other part, the next one is we want to make sure we use D, which is we want to make sure it's designed specifically for repurposing. Anytime that you're creating a video, understand where else can I use this? Is this something that has a transcript that is going to be able to turn in a social media post? Can I use it in shorts? Can I create a checklist? Can I create a quiz for it? Is there a framework in it? So make sure that you've got some design for it there. The other one is educate first, entertain second. Remember, it's the transcript that we need, right? Or the transcript that we want. Your ability to make sure that you have valuable content in the transcript and not just, you know, doing stuff that is for the entertaining purposes. If you can do both, great. And that's where your personality comes across and your ability to share your experience. But always remember, I got value. I'm inviting engagement. I want to repurpose it. And I want to make sure that I have some valuable content that help educate people about my particular um, TAM or topics that I'm interested in. And the last one is O. What is that? You got to make sure that you can organize it in a way that makes sense, that the transcripts are available and indexable, and that you have a collection of them and that you keep them. That is the value for AI, is all of those transcripts are going to be pulled and used with your own tools and any of the AI interfaces that you have in your campus and in your community. Now, there's a whole bunch of other additional things that are cool about uh, YouTube, but if you're in the AI space, if you're a small business, create as many YouTube videos as fast as you can, because that is the meat and potatoes for AI when it is actually creating content. And the more of the content that is yours, the more proprietary information that you have to pull from, the more you can protect your business and make sure that no one can copy you. Uh, my name is James. Hope you enjoyed this. Trainingsites.io. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and come join. It's free. We talk about all of this stuff that's here to help you start, build, and grow your education business. Take care and expect the best.